Okay, all our batch items are green, so that means that they've completed successfully. When you click on a batch item, you will see any associated output information here. To open a batch item, first let's open a viewer. And you can just double click on the batch item to load it in a viewer. And of course, the stimulus maps associated to this item. Okay, so from scrolling through this video, you can tell that it's definitely much more stable than the input. We can actually take a look at the input as well. So let's open another viewer. And let's go back to the batch manager. So let's load the input of a batch item, select the batch item and then click view input. And since we have more than one viewer open, it will prompt you for which viewer you want to load the input into. Okay, so here we have our input and there's our motion corrected output. And we can actually create a mean projection of these two to compare. Let's take a mean of the input mean of the output. So if you look closely at the mean of the motion corrected image and the input image, you can see that the motion corrected image definitely has a much sharper mean projection than the input. So that's showing that motion correction did occur. Let's look at a few other outputs. Take a look at this one. This one looks pretty good too. Let's take a look at this. looks pretty decent as well. So for downstream processes, I'm just going to choose this one for now. And you may need to play around a bit with parameter combinations to determine which combinations work best for your recordings. But as I mentioned previously, I highly recommend looking at the official Cayman documentation on the parameters, as well as their papers to really understand how this works. So I'm just going to proceed with this parameter variant. Okay, so let's proceed with using this one for CNMF. So let's open the CNMF GUI. Let's dock it in here. And like uh, motion correction, um, I highly recommend looking at the Cayman papers on CNMF and they're linked in the description as well as uh, linked in the mesmerized documentation as well in order to better understand these parameters. So over here these uh, these traces do not rise instantaneously. I'll just show you an example. So as you can see that there is a visible rise time with uh, these traces. So we'll use a P of two for this. Don't need the ROI anymore. Okay. 
So I'm going to choose uh, a patch size. Let's use the measure tool to estimate a patch size. Maybe something like that. That's about uh, 200 or so. Say half size for, let's go a bit smaller. Yeah, something like that. It's about 150. Let's say 80. An uh, overlap of 50. And let's say there's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's about 10 to 12 neurons per patch. Let's say 12. Let's measure approximate radius of a neuron. So this one's about 22. Let's measure another one. That one's also pretty close to 20. Let's put 10. And just to demonstrate how you can use different parameter variants, I'm going to choose different signal to noise ratio variants. Start with just one. DK time of this is approximately three to five seconds. Let's choose four. Okay, let's add another one. It's two. Another, it's three point five. Okay, so those three parameter variants are now in the batch. So as you can see, they're identical except for the min SNR, the min signal to noise ratio parameter that we've set. And note how the FR or frame rate parameter is automatically found. That's why it's important for you to load your metadata when loading your recordings. And one minor thing which you may have noticed is that I've just given all of these the same, all of these batch items the same name. Um, you can do that and that's usually useful because you might have a recording with the same name or you know like from the same animal in the same trial and you want to try out different parameter variants for it. So you don't need to worry about these having the same name. They're still kept track of because uh, internally, what actually keeps track of these different batch items is their unique identifiers, which are always different. Okay. So one last thing I'd like to change before actually starting these CineMath items is to reduce the number of threads that Mesmerize is allowed to use. And this is because CineMath can be quite RAM intensive. And from experience, I know that an image of, of this size is going to max out the RAM at about 30 threads with the uh, amount of RAM that I have available on this system. And this is something that you'll just have to figure out by experience uh, for your specific system. Okay, let's start this batch from this item onwards. Clear the viewer work environments, yes. Okay. So as usual, you'll be able to view the standard out from this batch item over here. And in your system monitor or task manager, 
you'll also be able to track the mini processes um, over here when they start. So yeah, there. And in order to abort our batch that's currently running, you can you know abort the entire batch. So all items, uh, the process is related to all items will stop, or you can just abort the current item and it'll move on to the next item. Okay, so this will take about 15 minutes to complete all three items, and I'll start the next part of the video.